Time to start that, I guess. Um, so, as I mentioned, I'm Kevin Bean. Um, I, for a long time, I did like uh, the Java thing for a really long time. And uh, for the past year, I've been doing uh, mostly Ruby on Rails stuff. I dabbled in a few other things. Um, but one of the apps that I built, um, we had an API for it, a RESTful API. And it was like my first um, you know, Ruby on Rails based uh, RESTful API. And um, so I kind of struggled through that. And, and then I built an, another two, two more apps um, where I also built the RESTful API. <coughs> and so I kind of just wanted to like just talk informally about stuff that I found out, um, stuff that I thought was interesting about um, uh, RESTful APIs in the whole Rails ecosystem. And a lot of this stuff will apply not just to Rails. So, so don't, don't think that just because I'm talking about Rails, it only applies to Rails. I mean, you, can, you can apply some of the same versioning techniques to other uh, web uh, platforms and stuff. So, um, so anyway, that's kind of basically what I'm going to talk about. Um, and I put hipster 1.0 compliant because I have some obligatory pictures at the beginning here, you know. So, so I'm going to talk about versioned APIs. So, um, so the idea behind version APIs is you, you have some you have some URL, and you, you, you're going to evolve that URL over time. So it may take additional parameters or return um, additional data over time. And so then the question is, well, how do I how do I version that so that um, you know, as I add new capabilities to this API, new cl old clients don't break, new clients can use the new thing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then how do I how do I sort of organize my code? How do I or that organize my URLs to do that? So that's kind of what I mean by versioning. So you have a set of services, and you want to evolve those services over time. Um, RESTful APIs. So um, uh, how how many people are familiar with like what RESTful APIs are? Okay, so so um, I've never read the Roy Fielding thesis of RESTful services, but um, base, the basic basic idea REST stands for representational state transfer, and the basic idea is that you've got these resources, and you want to provide access to them, and and, and over uh, HTTP protocol, and so you use the HTTP um, sort of actions: get, post, put, delete. To access those resources, <coughs> so so that's kind of what a represent or what a RESTful API is, um, and they're pretty easy to do in Rails, um, and I assume they're really easy to do in other um, web frameworks and stuff. Um, and we'll be talking about APIs. Um, I couldn't find a good picture for an API, but I thought it was cool that there was actually a plumbing company named API Plumbing, so I just had to put that on there. So. Um, and specifically, we'll, I'm going to show some Rails code, but again, like a lot of this stuff, the concepts behind it, you can apply to other, to other things. So, um, And this presentation is a best practice-free zone because I am not an expert on this. Um, I'm still learning a whole bunch of stuff. And, and today, um, I kind of put together some examples uh, using <clears throat> some of the different techniques, and I have some opinions on what I like and don't like, but could be completely wrong. So, um, uh, so I actually kind of like to hear what you guys like too. Um, okay, so so I, I've been playing around with this little app that I built. Um, it's called Enumerous, and um, basically, I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, um, basically, what it does is you have these um, counters, okay? And so you can you can create new counters and then you can count stuff. <laughs> and so like in my example thing here, I have, uh, uh, it kind of scrolls off there, doesn't it? Oh, well. So I have like, uh, how many TPS cover sheet reminders I've received in the last uh, um, so many days. So you can basically just play around here with incrementing and, and decrementing counters, counter values. <coughs> And you can go create a counter. So, what, what should we count? Uh, what would be interesting? Uh, hipster 1.0 buzzwords. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hipster buzzwords. Start with zero. All right. So, 
So basically, that's what this thing does. But then I have a, like a little API for it. Um, so you go to numerous, and then there's a, so you say API v1 counters will give you. Uh, it's not good. Counters will give you a little JSON representation of the counters that are out there. So the the counter ID, the name, its current value. Um, and I can say counter number four and just get that counter. Um, that kind of thing. Or I could do it I could do it from the command line too. Um, so I can say like curl numerous counters. Oops. API V1 counters. That's right. Yeah. Or counter number four. I don't know if you guys can see that. I can. So anyway, so it's just a little, real simple little RESTful API yeah, to access these counters. <coughs> um, you can also, you know, so so just like you can increment and decrement using the web app, you can, you, I can do that through the command line. You can say, uh, uh, do a post. This is helpful. Oh yeah, how's that worse? It's a good thing. So I can I can hit this URL that I can do a post to it, um, and I can hit the increment URL. So that should increment the value of that counter over and over again. All right. So just just a real simple little just a real simple little idea. Okay. So so that's cool. Um, so. You'll notice kind of the way I did this was um, uh, in the URL I have I have v1 in the actual URI part of the URL, so that's the version of the API. Um, and this is the way I've done them before. I put the version in the, in the URI. Um, but as I was playing around with this stuff, I found out oh, there's a couple other ways to do this. So um, so basically, I wanted to talk about some. Uh, some ways to do this. Um, oh, so yeah, here's the here's the API. So <clears throat> you do a, a get to API v1 counters, you get all the counters. You do a get to counters slash ID, you get a particular counter. You can create a counter with the third one, delete a counter, and then increment or decrement. So that's just a simple sort of, sort of toy API. So as I was playing around with this stuff, um, there's a there's a a Ruby gem called Versionist, um, which which uh, I did some examples with, and I'll show you. Um, but oh, I need to. Oh, there we go. Um, so what this thing does is um, basically lets you try out. Or it basically implements various versioning strategies for your API. So the one that I'm that I was using, where I have the V1 in the path, is, they call it um, you know path-based versioning. Um, the two other ones that they support are um, request parameters. So I can say like question mark version equals v2. So I can pass a parameter on the end of the URL. Um, and then they have another one. Uh, oh yeah. So this is the one that I. Didn't really know about anything about. Um, so it's it's a header based one where you basically pass in an accept header. The client, when it calls the API, passes in an accept header, and then so you have a custom uh, header value there, and then you pass in the version along with that. And so it's not part of the URI at all. Um, and so so you would never see it in, you know when you're looking at the URL. Um, you'd only see it in the HTTP header. So, anyway, so those are the sort of the three strategies. Um, so, so again, the path one is is um, you, know, you put the v2 in there. Um, the parameter, you put the question mark version equals something, and then the header is you would just have API slash counters, no version in there. Um, and then you pass along this accept header with the version inside of it. 
So, so what I thought I would do is show show some examples of, of that. Okay, so this um, this file that we're looking at is the Rails. Um, ha Rails has this routes configuration, which basically sets up the URIs that your application listens on. And so up at the top here, I have um, this thing. You, you'll see this uh, resources counters, and in, in the Rails. Um, uh, in the Rails routes, what that means is um, it's going to set up a <clears throat> it's going to set up URLs for this resource called a counter, and so it's going to set up the um, you know index, show, um, create, edit, update, delete those basic operations that you can do with a counter. So by by creating this resources, that's that's what Rails will do by default. And then I'm adding a couple. Operations called increment and decrement um, for a particular counter. Okay. Um, so th this this section is basically for the uh, controller that handles the, the HTML part of my website. Um, down here, I have the routes for the version one of, of the API. And so, a little bit bigger. So, so the way this works is you say, oh, I have a namespace called API, and inside, inside of that I have a namespace called V1, and then inside of there I have my resources uh, counters with, with the increment and decrement operations. So this thing right here sets up um, those URIs and, and, and makes them available to clients. Okay, And then it'll route them to a Rails controller on the back end. So, um, so that's so this is sort of doing it by hand. Um, so it's, you know, this is if you're not using you know any any Ruby gems to do any magic for you, this is how you can do it. So what I did was I made a version two of the API using this versionist gem. And so it has this kind of really simple um, uh, domain-specific language kind of thing where you basically say, hey, I'm going to create a new API version. And um, you can ignore the module thing. That's just a Rubyism. Um, but the path is API v2. That's the, on the front of the URI path. And, um, and then inside of that, I have my resources. Um, so. It's really not that much different than, you know, what I did up here. Um, instead of instead of creating two namespaces, um, all, all it saved me was just um, making this API version method call. So for the path routing, this is you know, pretty pretty trivial. It's not, not a big difference. Um, so restart the Rails server. So if I if I said um, localhost 3000 <coughs> API v1 counters and I could change that to v2 I should get should get, the API is not returning anything different here I'm returning the same stuff um, so so it's listening to both um, the v1 and v2. Uh, versions of the services. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So we'll look at the next one, which is um, version. Of, let's see, uh, a new parameter. Okay, so this is um, so what we're going to do here is imp increment or implement our API. To do this, so I pass in question mark version equals v2 to specify my version. 
Okay, so there's my V1 stuff, still the same. And then version 2, again I call API version and I pass it some module information. Um, and then I say, hey, I expect to get a parameter called version. And, and whenever you get a, a value of V2, um, expose the counters resource under that URL. Um, so it's so it's going to look at the basically anytime it gets a request, the, the Rails router is going to look for this parameter for us and route it route the request to the controller that handles version two of the API. Um, so we say so we, this one won't work anymore. Um, but if we say API counters and version equal to V2, we should get something back. Yeah. Um, so that's so that's the parameter um, basically. Check out uh, version. And then the last one is the header one. So that's this. We're going to expose our URI as just API counters, and then we have to pass in this accept header. Um, so the thing that's kind of interesting about this is um, it's actually a little bit harder to play around with, because you can't really, well, at least I don't know the way to do this from the browser. Um, and if you use curl, so instead of passing in this, I have to do um, dash h, and I have to do accept application Firefox extension. Yeah. Which has extensions for Chrome. Yeah. You can also specify headers in you know, like jQuery, XHR, requests, right? Yeah, I think you probably can, yeah. So, okay, so there's, yeah, I don't know what I, sure what I did wrong there. Oh, it was a different one. Okay, so I, so I called the input. <coughs> So that's that's calling the increment API. Um, so okay, so when I was reading about this, um, there was a uh, there was a hacker news thread that I had to link on here. Um, I don't know, I'll post this somewhere. But um, there was a hacker news thread, and somebody basically said, "Hey, I'm making this you know RESTful API. What do you guys think about how to, how to version this thing?" And so there's a whole, you know, a whole big argument about all these different methods. And somebody said, oh, you should put the version, you should use the path method, you should put the version in the URI. Other people said, no, that's horrible. Their argument was that you should never have the version in the URI. The URI should always remain the same. And that the, um, the header should specify which version you want so that the URI is constant. Um, and so that whenever you want to access a particular resource, the URI is always the same. And you pass a header that specifies which version of that you want. Why is that a good thing? They, I don't know. This, they, they thought it was, it was better that the URI was um, to, to clients was always the same. So, I, so personally, between these three, <coughs> um, I mean, like I said, this is the one that I have used before. Um, and I like it because it's very explicit. I say which version right inside the URI. Um, this one's okay. Um, you know, I mean, I can I can still see that it's that it, the, which version it is, and I can I can use it in the browser, and I can you know use it in the command line pretty easily. This one seems to me seems on um, first cut at this seems um, pretty uh, academic. <laughs> um, 
like I can see I can see the point of having the URI be the same, but I, I'm not exactly sure why it's that incredibly useful to keep the URI the same. So for for a particular resource. Um, so anyway, um, I don't know. So do you guys have any? Uh, have you seen RESTful APIs that, that do use these different techniques? Like I know. Um, Actually, what's that? Salesforce. They do that, yeah. I've used um, Stripe, and they they have the version in their in their uh, URI. Um, actually, I was reading GitHub. They switched from this to the header one, um, so their their URL is completely devoid of a version. Um, and you, it either defaults to the latest version, or you can pass in a header that says which version you want to update. I don't know. I'm, again, like I said, my preference is that I see it somehow and that it's easy to change and pass in. So I, I, I like either the path or the parameter uh, way of doing that. Um, so there's a couple other Ruby gems that do this that I didn't uh, play around with too much. There's one called Drape and another one called Rocket Pants. And they basically um, allow you to su supposedly easily expose version uh, RESTful APIs. Um, and I think they do they do a few other things that versionist doesn't do, but versionist seemed pretty uh, straightforward, but you know and actually when I looked at it and when I played around with it, I, I didn't actually find it extremely beneficial. Like I would probably rather just do the versioning by hand in the routes file myself than let the gem do it. Um, but maybe there's some other things that it does that I'm not aware of. I don't know. Um, the other thing, I don't know if you're, if you're doing Rails stuff, um, Rails 3 in action, they have a really good chapter on, on creating a, a RESTful API. And that's what I followed originally when I built some RESTful APIs. And they used the um, path version um, of doing this. Um, so I guess before I move on, I sh probably went really fast. But I mean, does that, does anybody have any questions or? Any, any opinions on, on any of this stuff? Is that repo in GitHub? Um, yeah. Um, I was going to poke around in your controllers a bit because so I don't know anything about Rails controllers. Yep. Um, yeah, just go to. Um, yeah. Oh, we already forked it. <laughs> KWD and numerous. So. Who forked it? I forked it. He did. Is your version better? Should I use yours? No. <laughs> I've not done a thing with it. <laughs> My version will be better. I know. <laughs> so in this doesn't have anything to do with versioning. In Rails, have you um, sent a large amount of data up to RESTful API? No, actually, like, I haven't. But I actually have an app that I'm about to work on where I may. If you want to like post pictures into a RESTful API or something. Yeah, I no, I've never done that. Okay. But there's one, there's an app that I'm going to work on that is going to have a relatively large amount of data. So I'll I'll find out. Do you, do you, I mean, do you have any? No, I'm oh. I'm curious about that. Okay. Like binary kinds of data. Or? Yeah, because like when I tried to get it to accept something other than JSON, mm. you know. Who are? I had trouble, but I don't know anything about Rails. Yeah. So. Hmm. You're an IRC guy. Yeah, sometimes when I look for help on things. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have a channel for this group. Oh, you do. The Omaha Dev channel on oh. Freenode. Oh, sweet. Okay, yeah, that's why it's just me. Name. You can hang out with me. All right, sweet. <laughs> His website says he's an IRC guy. Um, oh, so this is just not particular to to the RESTful API, but some things I was going to try was, was well, this part is, but I was going to try to build the API in Sinatra because, I don't know, you've used Sinatra, right? Yep. So, like, 
as a, when I, where I started out was I was building this Rails app that had a, like a, a regular web a web front end to it, right? And then we built this API. And over time, as I built stuff, I've been realizing more and more that all I want to do is just build an API. Yep, that's all we do. So we have all of our like view code and everything is all on the front end okay. uh, with Dojo, and then you just essentially hit the future for us in Sinatra to talk to the database to save and retrieve okay. data. Yeah. So do you do you have do you have authentication over over the API? Or? Yeah. Okay. We. Uh, how it works. Um, yeah, it, it hits a route with with the um, the credentials in, as in, in the header. Okay. And then it passes back a a session cookie. Okay. And then that cookie value you just get sent on all the on all yeah. Else. yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm not sure if we're doing it the correct way. Well, actually, you know, um, the reason I was asking was because I, I haven't watched this yet, but um, on Railscast, he talks about, he has one called uh, Securing an API, I think. And, I mean, it's kind of Rails specific, but I think he does it that way. So, um, but th this looks pretty good because he basically. I, I would think you could apply the techniques that he has there to just a synopsis that I would get. So, um, and then I was going to try Node.js too, because <laughs> I just think it'd be fun to build like the whole <laughs> the whole thing in JavaScript. Um, but I I know that Node has some uh, packages that like there's some RESTful API packages out there. Uh, yeah, there's a this package called Express, which is essentially like Sinatra. Sinatra, yeah. Okay. So, and um, so the last thing I had was uh, this enumerous thing is just completely a toy side project. It's on GitHub, um, like I said. And uh, so there's a whole bunch of things I want to play with. So I want to try Backbone with it. You know, do some better charts and graphs, and um, do a little mobile web app front end to it and stuff like that. So, um, so. If you guys want to play with stuff, you know, go ahead and fork this thing and experiment with it and if you have cool stuff, you know, send me a pull request and I'll put it in there. I'm hosting it on on one of my Linode instances. So uh, you know, if you have if you have something you want to put up there and um, I'd be happy to happy to put it up. So anyway, that's about it. So now the game stuff. Some mm -hmm. game stuff. Cool. Hey, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm.